Today I'm going to be installing flex fuel on my 2009 BMW 535XI. Now this process for the install should be the same for pretty much all N54s. However, this DIY would be more specifically geared towards an E60 BMW with the N54 motor. This is the brains behind the whole operation. The motive flex fuel module here, as well as the motive flex fuel wiring harness, and not pictured, and I won't be covering this, is the flex fuel line install and sensor install. I did that a couple days ago and I didn't film it, but there's other good videos out there from Fuelit and some other places that show you how to install an ethanol content sensor within an any N54. The E60 is going to be a little bit different as well, but it can be done. The kit from Motive will fit the N or the kit from Motive will fit the E60 as well. Just make sure you tell them that you have an E60 and they'll send you a little extra line too. Before any of this install takes place, you're going to need to make sure that you have a flex fuel tune installed. Um, or flashed like you can even use the V8 on the off-the-shelf maps But you're gonna have to have a flex fuel flashing license You're also gonna have to have an E85 Map pack if you do the off-the-shelf one if not make sure your tuner knows that you're tuning for flex fuel So because it's been covered a million times you're gonna the first step is gonna be to remove the wiper cowl Which I've already done and I've done that in numerous other videos as well And you're gonna want to locate the DME then locate the five screws that surround the DME box, and you're gonna to need to remove them with a T30 Torx bit. Before you go any further with messing with the DME, it's always a good idea to make sure your battery is disconnected. So go ahead, locate your battery, take a 10 mil to the negative terminal, crank that negative terminal off, and set that cable aside somewhere. Once you removed all the screws, make sure your cover is completely clear of any dirt or water that could get into the box. Then go ahead and remove the cover. But first you're gonna to need to slide that little locking mechanism over in the position of unlock. Now that the cover's been removed, we can locate the DME, which is right here. And we're going to be pulling out these two harnesses, this one and this one. Best way to do this is just to kind of have a good grip on here. On this clip, pull it off to the side a bit, and this comes right up. And just do the same for the other side as well. Next, we're going to have to slide this whole thing completely off the uh, smaller subconnector. And to do that, you can easily insert the pick tool into there or into the other side. Although, let's see if you get that closer, that won't focus, but right about there there's a hole where you can put a pick tool in and kind of push this back a little bit more and this whole slider comes right out. Now that the slider's out, we're going to locate the small black sub connector, which is that guy here, and then we're going to pop that out by putting the pick tool in through that slot there and then pulling it out the other side. There's also a clip here, uh, it's going to be hard to focus on there, but you'll see it on yours, there's a clip up here where you kind of have to just kind of push up with your fingernail while you pull on the pick tool and then this whole thing slides right out. And that's what it looks like when it's all slid out. So now we're going to locate pin 16. On your connector there'll be a number 14 here and a number 26 here. So from the 14 count two over and you'll see this purple or this white wire with the purple stripe that has to be pulled out. The best way to pull these out is to depress. There's like a little silver clip that holds these pins in. So using a pick tool just kind of push in and then pull out the wire at the same time and don't yank the wire out too much because you don't want to lose a connector in here that'll cause a whole bunch of trouble so give it a little bit of time they're pretty much they're pretty easy to come out some may be more stuck than others but once you got this uh, white wire with the purple stripe out put a piece of electrical tape over this wire because you won't be inserting it back in now that you've taped up that wire and it's gone and out of your life forever we're gonna go ahead and locate the green wire from the flex fuel harness, or some of them might be black with some heat shrinked green tubing over it. You're just going to insert this to where pin 16 came out of. Now that that's inserted, you're all done with that connector and you can slide it back in. And you can put the slider back on that whole harness. So now we get to work on this side of the harness. And for this, you don't have to remove the slider at all because the pins or the connectors here come out right from this side and it's going to be the same exact way by sliding this thing out with the pick tool while making sure that you depress this clip here which of course it's not going to focus there and pull that out just like you did the other one and this also just to let you know the wire is over here you can you know put a uh, cable tie or do whatever you want to manage that wire a little better or the whole thing pretty much once it's all set and done after removing this longer black sub connector, locate pin number 25, which should be an empty slot. And just like the other one, this is labeled. So on this side, you're gonna see it start with the number 23, end with the number 44. So go up from 23 and count down two spaces. 
In that empty slot, we're gonna take the orange wire from the flex fuel harness or the black with orange heat shrink, depending on whichever harness you received, and insert that into where pin 25 was. On the same sub connector, but on the side opposite that you just inserted the orange wire into, we're gonna locate pin number 10. There should be a yellow wire in there, and we're gonna take pin number 10 out. With pin number 10 out, we're gonna take this female end of the connector on the yellow side of the harness from the flex fuel, and install this to where pin 10 was. Now with the original pin 10 removed, take a piece of the heat shrink tubing that was supplied with your kit and put it over this pin um, that's loose that you took out. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna insert the male end from the yellow wire on the flex fuel harness into where you removed pin 10, for, or I'm sorry, into the old yellow wire that came out of pin 10. And then we're just gonna heat shrink tube over these two wires to make sure that there's no open electrical connections. All right, now that you've heat shrunk it all together, make sure to test it by slightly tugging on it. And make sure you also say, yep, that's not going anywhere. If you do not have an AIC split second controller or port injection, what you're gonna need to do next is take this blue wire that comes off of the flex fuel harness and either put electrical tape over it or heat shrink tubing so this doesn't touch anything in the uh, DME box there. If you do have port injection, make sure you follow the instructions. Unfortunately, I don't have port injection on this car, so I will not be able to show you how to do that. I apologize for the background noise from landscaping, but this is what that all looks like when that blue wire's been heat shrinked, and leave a little over the tip there so it doesn't bump into anything. So now you're done with that sub connector as well. You can go ahead and slide it back into the main connector right there. The next part of the instructions call for this green harness here, having two orange wires coming out of it to be tapped into for a 12 volt power supply. On the E60s, it's very tough to get this bottom connector up and out because those wires are so much tighter. So although not fully recommended, I'm just going to be posi tapping pin number two off of here, which connects to the inner wire, the 12 volt supply coming into the DME compartment. Now it's only really not recommended because this connector could come loose, um, probably won't, but it could and then that will interrupt the 12 volt power supply to the flex fuel module and I guess could cause issues. So right now we're going to go ahead and use the posi tap. There's a link in the description on how to exactly set your posi tap up and grab off of pin 2 and plug pin 2 back in and that posi tap will be using the red wire coming off of the flex fuel harness going into that 12 volt supply. So that is what that connection should look like when it's all said and done. Now the last thing to do is take the ground wire from the flex fuel harness and we're gonna run it to this ground here. But I'm gonna look into a way of running it to where it's not gonna get pinched by the lid and we're not gonna compromise the water seal or the watertight seal of the DME compartment too much. So I'm not really a fan of the way that that ground is going to be, but due to the limited amount of wire that I've got here, it's kind of the only option I have until maybe one day I'll extend the harness or drill a hole here or something with a, a grommet or some kind of sealing place where that wire can run a lot more stress-free. And then pretty much lastly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click or clip in the flex fuel box module into this harness here and then run this wire that goes to the ethanol content sensor all the way down obviously a lot more cleanly than that to where the ethanol content sensor is and for that I've got to jack up the car and remove a panel. So up underneath the car hopefully you'll be able to see if not I'll upload a picture. I don't really have good lighting down here but there's my ethanol sensor and there's the harness clipped into it so that side is pretty much complete until I get a bit of a better mounting solution for that sensor however with its tight zip ties it's has stayed solid for the past week and I've had no issues with fueling. All right, so now that the wiring's ran and I'm going to leave this temporarily like this uh, I think I'm going to find a way to get another water tight seal pretty much through these grommets there and those ones as well so there's no pressure on the harness or premature wearing of this uh, of those wires. I'm gonna go ahead and install these uh, harnesses or whatever you want to call these connectors back into the DME and then plug the motive flex fuel box into this. Everything is all connected and installed. I'm gonna go ahead and re reconnect the battery again and then try to fire it. Our battery's been reconnected. I've double checked all DME connections. 
Now it's time to give it a start. That's odd. I am not getting any fault codes, so I'm gonna go and triple check all that wiring and compare it with the instructions again. Sorry for the sweat, it's quite hot today. So after quadruple checking everything, including the wiring and instructions, everything seemed spot on. Everything was correct, uh, I didn't miss anything, which is good, because now I don't have to go back and refilm certain things. Uh, it still didn't fire. It still didn't want to start up. However, I just said, you know what, let me try again to rewrite the map. I did, and you'll see what's happening. There we go, it's running. I'll get that because I haven't driven it just yet. Once I move about 10 you know, feet or so, that'll, that should turn right off. That happens anytime I flash a new map. And it probably does for you guys as well if you've ever done this. Uh, with uh, If you've ever flashed an MHD map or a custom map, they all do the same thing. All right, and now here you can see, to see that it works, I'm getting an ethanol content reading. So it says I've got 6.7% ethanol content, which is just about on par with uh, the stated E10 that they say they put in the pumps now for 93 octane. Um, so that's good. I'm going to try putting some more ethanol and bring it into the content up to about maybe 30-ish percent and see if it switches over to the E85 map that I've gotten there. So now it's time to go ahead and button everything back up together, put your flex fuel module and wiring in a way where it's going to be out of the way and pretty much stress free so you're not pulling on any of these wires that are either on your flex fuel harness or on the DME harness itself. Then of course to put the cover back on, wiper cowl back on, and go for a test drive. So that's pretty much going to do it for this video. So make sure if you like this video give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend that they might think is helpful, and subscribe for more content because I'm going to have more stuff for the E60, stuff that maybe not everybody does with their E60, there's no DIYs out there. Kind of like the flex fuel, I haven't really seen the motor flex fuel done yet on an E60, so maybe I'm the first, I don't know. So thanks again for watching, remember, as always, keep it foul.